My job may finally allow me to say I told you so. Mm. Before I show you proof of me being right, just know that I'm wise enough to not intro this clip with a wise man once said, but I'm observant enough to know that I nailed something before it even happened. With that said, y'all want to know how I knew that the owners of the Cleveland Guardians weren't honoring Native Americans and the indigenous peoples of America by nicknaming their team the Indians? Because U.S. teams never honored white people the same way. There's no mascots of a white character or caricature. On March 15th, the Portnacious Groves marching band performed at Disney's Magic Kingdom. The original YouTube video was deleted, but Tara Hauska, a co-founder of Not Your Mascots, shared a clip of the drill team on Twitter. Now, it would appear that Disney prohibited the drill team from wearing headdresses, but the dancers do have feathers in their hair, plus their dance and song parodies Native American ceremonies, including chanting, Scalp em, with music reminiscent of traditional Native American drums, I guess. If you search Port Nation's Groves and Disney on YouTube, You'll see that the school and the district have been performing like this for decades. And before I continue, yes, it was racist 50 years ago. Getting called out for it now only proves that people have more power and a voice than they used to. Things change. Of course on Twitter, a former student of PMG is going to justify this saying, it's just a song, as if putting racism to music makes it no longer racist. Also, Jesus was brown, whether he knows it or not. Saying something like this along with, oh well, the natives weren't perfect, they were cannibals, or we want to recognize them as the warriors they were, or they killed the settlers and scalped them, is classic settler move to innocence. Which is defined as actions that aim to alleviate settler guilt without doing anything meaningful to undo harm to indigenous communities. These moves superficially reconcile settler colonial relations but do nothing to repatriate land, power, or privilege. So wondering why a race of people can wear something like a headdress but you, a person who is not of that race, can't, was already covered by Simone Moya Smith, who told MTV in 2014, the headdress is reserved for our revered elders who, through their selflessness and leadership, have earned the right to wear one. Wearing one, even an imitation headdress, belittles what our elders have spent a lifetime to earn. Oh, and let's pause to talk about indoctrination. These are elementary school age kids spelling Indians, which is not... <sighs> More on this later. And they're chanting, scalp them. How does this honor natives or the indigenous peoples of this land? We know that the current racial demographic majority of this country wouldn't like it if minorities honored them. In July of 2018, author Frederick Joseph created a logo featuring the team colors of the Washington Commanders, formerly the R-Words, to show the hypocrisy involved with a certain subset of people accepting blatant racism while only having a problem if it involved them. He outlined how he was perceived wearing the shirt while walking through New York City. It wasn't good. As I mentioned earlier, a race of people calling another race of people the wrong thing, such as Indians as well, one thing. But Frederick Joseph could have gone with hunky or cracker. But as I've said before, those words were created by European Americans to describe Europeans. So not the same. And he went with Caucasians. Still not equal, but it drives home the point. Wait, white people in America, y'all know y'all aren't Caucasian, right? Right? Anyway, to go a bit further, for this to be truly almost as racist, he would have had to have changed the color scheme from burgundy, which was supposed to represent native skin color, not war paint, don't lie, with fill in the blank for Caucasians. Then he would have to chant gentrify them or redline them or disenfranchise them in order to honor white people in the racist history of, say, Texas. I can't see Port Nation's Grove School District doing that. It was never about honor, pride, and tradition. Lastly, to the people in the comment section of my last video who were suggesting that the Giants, Vikings, and Cowboys were mascots of white people. No. Giants refers to the size of people, not people themselves. Viking is a profession. Furthermore, black people can be cowboys. Similar notes for Patriots and 49ers. These aren't races. You're proving my point. For Rebel HQ, I'm Jeff Wiggins. My architect knows Japanese. For more from the Young Turks, stay right here. If you want to see content from yours truly, click on the hashtag below. I can also be found on all socials at he gonna be all right. Thanks for watching.